Dear students, welcome to the lecture series on power system analysis. Today we will be discussing a numerical problem uh, from the uh, textbook Modern Power System Analysis by Nagarath Kothari. Uh, that is example 12.3. This is a university question, previous university question. This was asked in Kerala University. So this can be asked for KTU also. So this the question goes like this generator given in the figure is delivering one per unit of power to the infinite bus. So this is your infinite bus V. The voltage is given as one per unit with the generator terminal voltage. So V T is terminal voltage is one per unit. And you have to calculate the generated M of behind the transient reactance. Transient reactance is 60 dash and you have to calculate E for the generator. You also have to find out the maximum power that can be transferred under different conditions. That is, you have a healthy system, that is, without any disturbance. Then you have a three phase fault in the middle of one line, that is, you have a fault here, assume, assume a fault here. And then after the fault, this line is opened. So you have to uh, analyze all the three conditions and you have to find out the maximum power that can be transferred. And also, you have to plot the power angles for all the three conditions. So we'll see how it can be done. So the terminal voltage is Vt angle alpha for the generator. Since your angle is not specified, we are assuming that alpha is the angle. So it is one angle, one angle alpha. Okay. So here you have one angle alpha. And the power that is transferred is given as one per unit. You are transferring one per unit of power. So the power that is transferred from this terminal up to the infinite bus is one per unit. So based on the general equation, that is power is given by E V by X sin delta. So using this general equation, I am writing V T V by X sin alpha. Alpha is angle between V T and V. So angle of V is zero, and that is reference. So V T angle alpha will be that alpha will be coming here. So divided by X. X is the total reactance between V T and V. So between V T and V, you have a reactance of 0.1 plus the resultant of 0.5 parallel. So you have 0.35. So, uh, so you will be getting um, 1 into 1 divided by 0.35 sin alpha equal to 1. 1 is the power that is transferred currently. So you will be deriving or you will be arriving at the value of alpha as 20.5 degrees. Now we are trying to calculate the current that is flowing um, into the infinite bus. So I is given by the terminal voltage Vt minus the uh, infinite bus voltage V divided by the total reactants. So that is 1 angle 20.5 minus 1 angle 0 divided by j 0.35 so this will be the answer that you will be getting 1.016 angle 10.3 per unit now you have to calculate the voltage behind the transient reactance E so E is given by uh, the uh, infinite bus voltage 1 angle 0 plus the total reactance between E and V that is 0.25 plus 0.1 plus a resultant of these two parallel lines that is 0 0.25 so that will be 0 0.6 0 0.6 into the current that is flowing ok so that is given by 1.075 angle 33.9 so this is a generated voltage E at an angle 33.9 degrees now we will take the case 1 when your system is healthy so here your P max is given by E V by X as you know so E is 1.075 and uh, the value of V is 1 and the value of X is 0 0.6 how will you get the value of X? so E and V the reactance between E and V is given by 0.25 plus 0.1 plus 0.25 is the resultant of this so that will be 0.6 total so E V by X will be getting 1.79 so the, mm, the equation for the case 1 is the electrical a power transferred for a healthy condition is 1.79 sin delta or E V by X sin delta. So that is this is the equation that you get. Now case two when you are when you have a three phase fault in the middle of one of the lines. So again it is E V by X sin delta. So how will you get this value of X? That is the important thing. You are getting 1.55. So how will you get X? So in case two you have a fault on one of the lines so you will you have one of the middle of one of the lines so your reactance diagram will be like this 0.25 is the uh, xd dash this is the transformer and then um, these parallel lines can be uh, indicated like this since you have a fault here 
so this is connected to the ground okay so 0.5 you are dividing it in half 0.5 and 0.25 so in order to find out uh, the uh, net reactance you have to solve or you have to apply star delta transformation at this terminal a node a so you will be getting uh, so when you do the star delta transformation you will be getting equivalent like this you will be getting one reactance here one reactance here and another reactance here you will be getting three reactances and the value of this reactance the one that connects E and V is given by which is which I have taken as X so this X is given by 0.35 plus 0.5 divided by E plus 0.35 into 0.5 divided by 0.25 which is the equation for star delta transformation so you will be getting 1.55 per unit here and you are neglecting these shunned values and you are only as, uh, considering the uh, uh, line that is con or the reactance that is connected between E and V so this is E and this is V so between E and V you have 1.55 and you can neglect these shunned values so you will be getting um, sorry yeah you will be getting uh, okay for case 2 1.075 uh, 1 into 1 that is Ev by x 0.694 sin delta so the equation is 0.694 sin delta for case 2 and for case 3 when your line is open okay so for case 3 when you one of the lines is open what you will get you will be having 0.25 plus 0.1 plus 0.5 so that particular line is open so you will be getting 0.85 was the total reactance so in that case you will be getting Ev by x as 1.265 okay and this is your third case hmm? when your one of your line is open 1.265 okay now what happens we have uh, this condition that is you are trying to plot all the three curves that is 1.79 sin delta this is case 1 this is case 2 and this is case 3 ok so for case 1 when you have a system is healthy you are able to transfer maximum power this 1.79 per unit and when you have a faulty condition you are able to transfer only minimum amount of power and when your fault is removed and your system has uh, against startup function functioning normally you are able to transfer more power ok 1.265 uh, per unit it is the maximum power that can be transferred when your system is so this is your case 3 ok when your system is operating um, with one line open ok these are the conditions that you need to analyze again uh, just during that fault condition what happens we will just analyze we have initially one per unit of power being generated and transferred and that equation is given by initially during healthy condition equation is given by Ev by uh, it is given by Pe1 this uh, 1.79 sin delta uh, so this can be equated to 1 because when your system is operating normally Pe1 will be equal to Pm Okay, whatever amount of mechanical power that is input will be converted to electrical output assuming your losses to be negligible so you will be getting delta as 33.96 so so this is 1 per unit ok and initially you are operating at 33.96 as the angle ok now you are, you are considering PE2 ok so when your fault occurs what happens mm -hmm. suddenly one of, you have a faulty condition and your uh, the prime mover is not able to respond suddenly for this fault ok so what happens is that uh, for that short period of time ok you will have a new operating condition your operating point will be shifting from this point to this point ok it will be shifting like this so during that condition even uh, due to the inertia of your rotating mass your uh, rotor is also not able to change the angle instantly so the power that is transferred during that condition that small amount of a uh, small time period uh, PE2 is given by 0 0.694 sin 33.96 since your angle is not varying due to 
system inertia or rotating inertia of the rotating mass so you will be getting uh, 0.387 per unit being transferred for some amount of time okay so your angle is not changing okay now you can see that your mechanical input is 1 per unit but your electrical output has reduced to 0.387 so there is a gross mismatch between this mechanical input and uh, electrical uh, output so what happens is that you, if your system needs to remain stable your mechanical input has to be reduced to 0.387 to keep the system stable because you have only that much amount of electrical energy being transferred to the infinite burst so during that condition there will be oscillations here between this this around this point there will be oscillations around this point so again you have one more condition when your line is opened so this that also can be analyzed in a similar way so if your line is not opened if your fault is sustaining your mechanical input has to be reduced from 1 per unit to 0.387 per unit okay but you can see that after some time your fault is being removed and your system is operating at a new operating point somewhere here okay so there will be changes in delta as well as the mechanical input so one from 1 per unit your operating point now comes down to some other value of uh, power okay so such analysis we will be doing once you take up the equilibrium criteria now you have to understand simply that you are able to draw the power angle curves for different conditions and uh, you can you are able to predict how much amount of power that can be generated okay in order to keep your system stable okay but your primer has to act fast or the governor system has to act fast in order to bring your power from 1 per unit down to 0.387 then only your system will remain stable uh, until your power reaches 0.387 you will be having oscillations okay assuming that you are you have no open condition so in, in this way you can analyze this this particular problem okay and you are asked to uh, do only up to this in the pro numerical problem you are asked to do only up to this that is you are asked to draw all the curves and you are asked to uh, find out the p max values 1.79 0.694 and 1.265 all the three p max values and the corresponding curves so if you finish up to this well uh, up to this figure your problem is complete